Uh, this book is what I'm ministering from today for the next few days. God Still Speaks. It's a book I wrote on the prophetic several years ago. Many of you have read it. And um, I'm, I'm sharing uh, from uh, this chapter um, called Discerning Your Part in God's, in, in, in God's Plan. Discerning Your Part in God's Plan. And um, I talk about prophetic revelation here on page number 36. And I'm, I mentioned the verse, surely the Lord will do nothing, but he, he revealeth, but he, he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. An amazing verse. God does not do anything in the earth until he reveals it unto his, his servants, the prophets. Why is that? God chooses prophets to um, enter into his counsel, his plans, his purposes, and reveals those plans to them So, except for several reasons. Number one, so they can pray. We pray forth the will of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Number two, so they can declare it. They can release it. They can reveal it, which means that God wants us to have a revelation of his plan. God does not want us to be in the dark concerning his plans for our lives, our cities, our nations, our regions. God wants to reveal his plan to you. God wants to reveal his plan to you. And God does that often through the prophetic ministry. When we prophesy over people, we're really prophesying the plans and purposes of God uh, into a certain situation, into that person's life. Now, God can show this through visions, dreams, speak the word of the Lord to, to the prophetic voice. And um, of course, we know that even the plan of God to bring Jesus to the earth was not done apart from God revealing it to prophets. The Old Testament prophets prophesied about his birth, his death, where he would be born, um, his redemption. Isaiah talked about it. Zechariah talked about it. Daniel talked about it. Ezekiel talked about it. Before it came, the prophet Joel talked about it. The outpouring of the spirit of God in the last days. So God did reveal his plans, which did manifest when Jesus came to the earth and um, died on the cross, was, was raised again uh, from the dead, ascended to heaven, sent the Holy Spirit. God revealed that to his servants, the prophets. It was written and, and Israel had the plan of God um, given to them through the prophets. That means that when Jesus came, they should have been prepared for him. Because they had advanced knowledge. They should have understood. Many of them missed it because they didn't understand the prophets. Um, they lacked discernment. They were blind to it. But it was there. God gave it to the prophets. It was there. And uh, so often when you read Matthew, he said that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. We see the fulfillment of what the prophets said, what the prophets revealed. And then even the disciples really didn't understand fully these prophecies. And Jesus had to open the eyes of the understanding and show them um, from the word of God. After his resurrection, he actually taught them and showed them himself in the scriptures so they can get a greater revelation. No, no wonder when, when Peter stands up on the day of Pentecost and the spirit of God falls and they speak in tongues and many are confused. Peter said, these men are not drunk. This is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. He understood that what was happening on the day of Pentecost was something that was revealed to Joel the prophet hundreds of years previous. God does nothing. He first reveals it, his secret to his servants, the prophets. That is one of the ways that God deals with it. Again, why? Because God wants us to know his plan. God wants to reveal his plan. God wants to show us his plan so we can walk with it, understand it, embrace it. Not be confused about it, not miss it. Remember, Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, how often I would have gathered you as a chicken, uh, gather, a hen gathers her chicks, but you would not. Israel, you missed the time of your visitation because you didn't know my plan. Uh, you had it, but you didn't understand it. I revealed it to the prophets. I gave it to you, but you didn't see it. You didn't understand it. So many of them missed it. And yet, well, it was revealed hundreds and thousands of years before Christ came. This is what God does in our lives today. 
He gives revelation of his plans and purposes through his prophets, through his prophetic voices to us, the people of God. This can be for you individually. When we're prophesying over people, we're really prophesying the plans and purposes of God. Now, God can show you things without a prophet. He can give you a revelation, but God does use prophets and prophetic voices to reveal uh, his plan and purpose for our lives, uh, for churches, for cities, for regions. They see, they're called seers in the Bible. They saw what was coming. They saw the plan of God. They saw the purpose of God. They knew it, they had insight and they spoke it and declared it to the people so that the people could know it, embrace it and walk in it. God does not want you to miss his plan. God does not want you to miss his purpose. God wants to reveal it unto you. And so he's given us prophets, prophetic voices, prophetic ministries. They are really an integral part of the church. I think the most tragic thing that can happen to a person is that they're in dark, in the dark concerning God's plans. They have no idea and they miss God's plans. They don't, they have no revelation of God's plans. There's no prophetic insight. There's no vision, no dream. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Uh, the word vision there means when there, where there is no prophetic word, the people perish. Uh, people perish and die for lack of vision. Vision was something that God gave to prophets. They were the visionaries. They had dreams and visions. They saw what God wanted to do and they revealed it to the people so that we can embrace it and walk in. So prophetic ministry is very important. I, I've received thousands of prophecies in my lifetime from prophets, prophetic people that helped me to understand and embrace what God wanted me to do. I knew the call of God. I knew that God had called me, but the details often I wasn't clear on and God would either confirm it, God would reveal it through prophetic utterances and prophetic words so that I can be confident in knowing that what I'm doing I'm in God's will. I'm not guessing it. I'm not trying to figure it out. I'm not confused. I'm not in the dark. I'm not trying everything. I'm very specific and focused on what God has called me to do. So this is important. And I might talk about that in this book uh, we, we're using called God Still Speaks, Discerning Your Part in the Plan of God. That is also available at Amazon.com. If you've never read it, I encourage you to get a copy, read it, educate yourself into the various functions and the, the different revelation concerning the prophet's ministry. I pray that you would have a revelation of God's plan for your life. I pray that you'll see the plans and purposes of God for your life. I pray that you'll not be in the dark concerning God's plan and purpose for your life. I pray that you'll have insight, understanding, revelation, and wisdom concerning God's plan for your life, that you'll fulfill his will because you'll know his will. You'll not be confused. You'll not be in the dark but you'll walk in the perfect will of God for your life. I pray that you will experience a good, strong, accurate, prophetic ministry. You'll be in a prophetic place, a prophetic church around the prophetic. You'll hear the word of the Lord. You'll receive the prophecies God has for you. Someone will speak it into your life. You'll, you'll get around prophetic people. You'll be a part of that prophetic company of believers that God is, is releasing around the world and that you'll know, you'll know, you'll know God's plans and purposes for your life. Father, I thank you for, uh, for Amos 3-7 manifesting in our lives that you do nothing, but you first reveal it, your secret to your servants, the prophets. Thank you, Lord, for revelation, prophetic insight, prophetic understanding, and prophetic revelation that comes to us because you're sharing your plans and purposes with us. We might know them, pray them, walk in them, and see them fulfilled in our lives in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, don't forget the books. Go to Amazon.com, the new prophetic book. Uh, we'll continue this, uh, this, this week on this book, God Still Speaks. I will be announcing the upcoming date for this month's webinar. For those that are part of John Eckhart TV, you get it every month. For those who are not, you can either sign up for it. I'm going to be talking this month something I've never taught on extensively in the area of deliverance. I'm going to be talking about deliverance and healing from madness and insanity. Um, now, before you say that doesn't apply to me, this webinar will show you how the enemy wants to drive you mad. He wants your mind. He wants to drive you crazy. He wants you to lose your mind. He wants to attack you with madness. 
There are demons of lunacy, madness, mental illness, mental breakdown, um, mental torment, insanity, confusion. I'm going to be dealing with that. And this is going to be an eye opener for many of you. I've actually finished a whole manuscript that we're going to put in John TV for those who register. We'll let you know within this week, the exact date and time, but I want every believer. You may say, well, that doesn't apply to me. I'm not mad. I'm not crazy. Well, uh, I'm going to show you that, that you can be temporarily mad at times. There are people that have lost it temporarily. There are people that are long-term madness, but it, no one is exempt from this. No one cannot be attacked by this. It is something and deliverance is needed and you can be free from any assignment of madness or confusion against your life. We're going to talk about sin and sanity. We're going to talk about pride and madness, witchcraft, divination and madness. I'm going to be going into this subject extensively and this is one you don't want to miss. So I'm just kind of preparing you for it, uh, getting ready for it. It's going to be revelatory. I've written over 21 chapters on this subject alone in the manuscript and ebook that I prepared and studied in this subject. The word madness is found five times in the book of Ecclesiastes. Madness is there for a reason. Is there for a reason. And uh, we're going to explain it, talk about it, the different manifestations of it, idolatry and madness, divination and madness, pride and madness, sin and madness, um, 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 idolatry and madness, uh, different types of things that can open you up uh, to madness, oppression and madness. Um, we're going to talk about it uh, and it's going to be eye opening for you to be able to minister to people who are suffering from what the scripture calls madness. OK, it's not what you think it is. Uh, we're not talking about clinical. We're talking about something spiritual here. And I'm so excited. I've been up the last couple of days wrapping this up, getting ready for this month. So we'll let you know about it. And um, we'll talk about it before the webinar this month uh, opens up for registration. If you want to be a part of that, go to johneckhart.tv, become a monthly subscriber. And when the webinar comes up, you'll get them every month. And there's a lot of other videos teaching a new series on pioneering videos. And ebook is going to be put in it very shortly. We're always adding more to John Eckhart TV. Okay, we're also getting ready for a major challenge coming up for women. Um, and it's going to be amazing. We're going to, we're believing for over 100,000 women to register for this particular challenge. That's how we're going to focus in, 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 in releasing it. Uh, we're going to have some uh, great speakers, uh, prophetic women. Uh, and it's going to be something that will really, really challenge you. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to sign off for Facebook, go into Clubhouse, and uh, we'll be back on tomorrow at the same time. Until you hear from me again, God bless you and double shalom. God bless.